yeah, yeah. So this is kind of my, my give back. So uh, in that regard, because I, I always want to encourage people to get out there and to, like, like we said, you know, get, get a little uncomfortable. But definitely, you know, you want to make sure that there's certainty in the deal. So you need to understand how to find them, how to pre-screen them, how to evaluate them, how to structure the deal, how to get in there and negotiate for the right terms and set the deal up for the exit strategy because exit is everything in business, you know, and that's the one thing that really drove me to that, that, that Jim Rohn talk um, to watch these folks uh, talk about money is because if your exit isn't set up, you know, it's sad, like over, what do they say? 90% of Americans don't even have a retirement account set up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's crazy. That's not good business, right? And you, oh, everybody owes it to themselves to have that exit. Um, some of the things that I would say is, is jump in, but don't get out there and start personally guaranteeing all this debt. If you use creative strategies and techniques, you're going to avoid my biggest pitfall. My biggest pitfall, Chris, is one time, banks turned me down. They said, Terry, we love you. We want to do more business with you. But right now, your debt stack is too high. Your debt to income ratio, it stinks. I was like, huh? They're like, yeah, you have too much debt. You have income, but you have too much debt. Like, we can't loan you any more money. You're risk. You know? And I was like, but my, my profile, my credit's not thin. They're like, it doesn't matter, man. You're maxed out. So I hit the ceiling. Your debt to income ratio. Holy crap, man. I'm sorry. You, we're going to talk about that in a second. Keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry. I know. It's fine. It's fine. So when I realized that and I hit my head on the ceiling, I was like, really? So I have to stop now? And they said, you know what you should do is you should go back and do some smaller deals. And, and I said, no, I'm going to do even larger deals. And so taking that advice of, of getting creative, what, I've, what I did was I started researching and I found a lot of people did this. Um, they went after non-recourse structures. So when it's a non-recourse structure, that means that you're not personally guaranteeing any debt. So your credit at that point becomes irrelevant. And if they want you to sign on behalf of an empty shell LLC, what does it matter? You're just signing on behalf of a new company. And you could form a new company in a couple of weeks. It's nothing. So all these things that people have this fearful mindset of, you know, it's false emotions appearing real, right? So you're thinking, oh, I don't have the credit. I don't have the track record. I don't have the capital. Well, there's plenty of capital when you lock down a deal at $7 a square foot. There's so much money available. You just got to get out of your comfort zone and just ask for the money. And if sometimes you have to get a little equity or you structure it where you give them a return, uh, they become a bank. They loan you a little bit of money. It's called bridge, right? Your bridge capital. So all these ways that these folks here that are listening to this, this great show, just understand that there's always a way, but you have to have the will. You got to have the willpower. You got to say, okay, I want to do this. This is something that makes sense. Obviously, I can, I can move forward and duplicate the success of both Terry, Chris, and everyone else. Like, you can do it. And, and the only time that, that, that you can't is when you have that one story in your head that says, for whatever reason, that you can't. 